93.1 WROI. Time now for our Woodlawn Hospital Doc Talk as we welcome to the program this morning, this month, Dr. Sheedy. Good morning, Dr. Sheedy. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you this morning? Great. Thanks for coming in here on a Monday morning back after Thanksgiving. How was your Thanksgiving? Went very well. Awesome. Good, good awesome. time with the family. Well, tell us, uh, remind folks a little bit about yourself uh, for maybe uh, some new listeners that uh, haven't heard before. Tell us about Dr. Sheedy. Well, um, I've been in practice here for 14 years at uh, Woodlawn Hospital. I started out with Dr. Rombach, who just left us in the last year. I hated to see her go. What a great partner she was. And um, But we're carrying on here. I've been in practice about 20 years, a little over, in, uh, in Chicago before uh, the family and I moved out. So uh, obviously uh, a lot of different uh, things in the ortho world. Uh, is there is there something you specialize in more than something else, or? Well, uh, Rochester Orthopedics. We try to meet the entire uh, needs of the okay. community. I did a sports medicine fellowship, um, but right now we're kind of focusing on what uh, is the growing aspect of orthopedics, which is joint replacement. Yeah. And, and it has grown over the years too, and uh, the technology with that has grown as well. Yeah, and we're lucky to be in the position we are, so close to Warsaw, the orthopedic capital of the world, and um, it's allowed us to advance quickly with the technology. We're kind of one of the first spots for it to come for a small facility. Yeah. You know, obviously the big centers get first crack at everything, but uh, being so close to Warsaw, we're able to train and uh, get the new robotic system in early. Obviously, uh, you said you've been in practice 20 years. Tell us a little bit about how things have progressed and, uh, and, and maybe something that maybe you didn't expect. Well, it's been really exciting for me. You know, um, orthopedics is uh, requires lifelong learning. There's uh, techniques and um, uh, the robotic side of things, the direct entry approach, total hip we're doing. Those weren't things I trained on in the 90s. <laughs> they came about in the 2000s and um, like I said it's been nice to be so close to the industry right. that we can stay on the cutting edge. Obviously uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, that hip total hip replacement. Obviously uh, they, they say, now this is what I hear, you can confirm or deny, uh, that it's a lot, a lot simpler and a lot safer for the patient. Um, I think that we're getting people back uh, uh, quicker than we did um, you know, 20 years yeah. ago when I started. Um, so our techniques definitely have improved and the hospital actually has just invested uh, in a new table to make it even easier mm -hmm. and better for the patient. Um, and uh, I think that's a good thing about Woodlawn Hospital. It's community oriented. It's run by a local board who has the community's best interests at heart and willing to make investments when yeah. uh, we need to keep up. And, and that's the that is the big thing, you know, keeping up because uh, obviously a lot of other places are. So if, if you're not, you're falling behind and uh, potentially uh, not having uh, what the need here in the community is. I would agree with yeah. that. So obviously we talk about hips, but you know, anymore it seems like they can, uh, you can almost replace just about anything. Well, uh, hips and knees are the, are the number one, but shoulders and ankles and then it kind of drops off after yeah. that. Um, but the, the hip and knee replacement uh, is projected to go up 300% over the next you know, 30 years or so, That's so there's going to be no shortage of people <laughs> needing joints replaced. In what what age range do you see the most on that? Uh, I know there's, you know, there's younger people that uh, back in the day wish they were a little smarter playing athletics and doing things with knees, catchers, and things like that, but at what age do you, do you usually see that that needs to be replaced, uh, say a hip or a knee? It seems to be about the sixth decade. Okay. I mean, there are some unfortunate people who injured their knee, you know, back in junior high who in their 40s just can't get around on a knee anymore. Um, so there are people in their 40s getting it done. Um, but mostly it's 60s, 70s. Okay. 
I know you said too you uh, you were in a sports medicine more like do you see that changing a little bit is that helping uh, having that, that knowledge and, and training maybe having trainers at the schools with with athletes is, is it helping some I definitely think it is uh, the preventive side is seems to be more um, Focus yeah. than it than it was in the past. Um, I think the the training takes it into account. I know the weight training is happening in the schools. You know, preparing for your sport yeah. instead of just showing up day one um, like a weekend warrior. So let's go back. At, at what's how many surgeries do you do on average for a week typically? Um, well, we're looking at. Uh, 10 to 12 okay. per week. Um, Pretty busy week. It gets, <laughs> it gets busy, um, but uh, everybody's uh, stepping up. You know, like yeah. I said in Dr. Uh, Rombach's absence, we have to uh, do more in less time. Right, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the neat part is too, is, is having the, the uh, occupational therapy that you can recover right, right there at Woodlawn and, and just get the, the whole thing in one spot. Yeah, we've got a great team across the board. The surgical team, um, the floor team, if, you, if you're admitted after your uh, particular surgery, and then uh, the outpatient and inpatient physical therapy side of things, and the office staff is always there to meet the patient's needs. And you mentioned floor staff. How many of these surgeries uh, are do, do stay in uh, maybe for an overnight or a couple days compared to how many go home the same day? Uh, the majority of our patients want to stay overnight if at all possible mm -hmm. and we're mostly getting most people out next day okay. but there's a big move across the country to go home same day. Yeah, it's kind of crazy because I, I'm sure when you first started that wasn't uh, near the case. Um, when I first started <laughs> if you had a knee arthroscopy <laughs> you might spend the night and now you're home two hours later. <laughs> Um, and going home after hip replacement, you know, 20 years ago, it was not common at all, and wow. now it's pretty, pretty common. Pretty cool. If uh, someone's having some knee or shoulder surgery or problems, and they want to take a look at it, how do they get a hold of you? Um, well, we have our info right here. Okay. I'm pretty sure our marketing put, put, director. Put her on the spot, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> well, calling the office is yeah. always the first uh, best step, and we're at 574-223-9525, and that's a number I don't have to call much. <laughs> yeah. That's a good thing. But I do, do remember it. Awesome. All right. So, obviously, if, if someone's in pain and, and needs a, a, to come in and look at you, just give you a call and set up an appointment. And we have, uh, it doesn't have to necessarily start with me um, because we have two great nurse practitioners okay. and Teresa Perkins and, and Jenny Hensley. Um, they've been in the area, you know, their whole lives basically. Awesome. Um, and are well trained and get the first steps going for you. And that's, what, that's always the important part is those first steps. Yeah, yeah most, uh, most people with sports injuries uh, do require MRI or additional yeah. testing or ordering therapy. We don't go right to surgery. Yeah. We try and um, obviously cure as many things as we can without uh, surgery. Right. Anything else you'd like to add this morning, Dr. Sheedy? Um, just excited about uh, where orthopedics is going and um, uh, really uh, can't promote the hospital enough. I think we do a great job over there in meeting the community's needs and letting people know they don't have to go far from home to get quality care. That's always great too, especially when your family, you're growing up here, you, you just, mom or dad needs something, you can just go see them here. It, it's, keep it local. It, it, I think it really helps in recovery when you can stay local. Doc, thanks for uh, coming in this morning. We'll look forward to talking to you again soon. All right. Pleasure thank, being here. Thank thanks you. Thanks for having me. Woodlawn Hospital's Doc Talk with Dr. Sheedy this month. Back with Giant Epidemiology.